Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. I'm sure that this has been an interesting couple of weeks for you or a few weeks for you now. Yeah, it's been very interesting to say the least. Yeah. Okay, so some of the big headlines that uh, have come out of the show, obviously the interaction between you and Chelsea when you guys were in the pods and that Megan Fox comment. Were you surprised at how that took off? Yeah, I don't remember being that much about looks, but in hindsight, we definitely should have stayed away from the looks conversation. How did it come up? Um, I mean, she asked me who our celebrity, if I had a celebrity lookalike. And so <laughs> that was who she gave me. But I I think everybody's maybe being a little bit too hard on her because she did say that she resembles. She didn't say uh, she looks exactly like her. But maybe my fault and my reactions for blowing it up like that because my, my eyes got absolutely wide open as soon as she said that and so there's no denying that maybe i'm the reason for that but got you listen i i'm on the the side of i see it like immediately when she said it i was like oh i see it so yeah i agree with you i think the reaction was totally blown out of proportion um she wasn't too far off but um okay so since leaving the pods or actually i will say watching it back what has it been like to see what made the cut how the story is going, but also reliving it. What's that been like? Yeah, I think um, I am. I am just so proud of Jess for getting the the edit she got. It is amazing to me they didn't show any bit of how she talked to me during our last date. There wasn't any clarity of why I chose Chelsea, and for those first couple episodes, there wasn't a whole lot of why I chose Chelsea. I mean the. Yeah, I was confused. Can you can you elaborate a little on that? Because I was confused about how all of a sudden you were so clear. Was there was she pretty harsh towards you at that date? Yeah, absolutely. We had I'll put it this way: we had a three and a, I had a three and a, three and a half hour date with Chelsea and a three and a half hour date with with Jess. My last date. I went into that date open minded. I was your boy was stressed, but I wasn't. I didn't have a decision made. And ten minutes in, she's. She's talking down to me. She's being super disrespectful because I don't have a decision. If she loved me that much in that moment, she should have told me. She should have communicated to me. But instead, she walked out of the room within 10 minutes. So she, you know, she made that decision a lot easier for me. And I do want to say I didn't, that decision didn't come by default. I had another date that I felt really highly about. At that point, Jess was my number one. And I walked into my next date, you know, I had my, my head down. I was really sad. I noticed how vulnerable I can be, how open I can be with, with Chelsea. And she picked me up and, and gave me exactly what I wanted in my life long term. Um, she didn't care that I was dating other people. Jess was, I would get hammered for talking about dating someone else. And, um, you know, Jess, Jess scares the shit out of me. She still does. And so we, uh, we learned that when conflict arises she walks out the door at least Chelsea will sit there and, and walk through it with me because it seemed like there was this narrative that like you would switch the minute you saw what Jess looked like you would be out the door um were you that interested in finding out what she looked like just maybe out of curiosity or were you were you trying to maybe pursue something with Jess down the road yeah I wasn't necessarily wanting to pursue something with her I was engaged so like that was the least of my concern but I I did love Jess and I had really really strong feelings with her and I was extremely curious to see what she looked like I mean naturally I mean we're human I think you we go into that experiment we, we lay it all down the the emotional connection we built for those days it was it was real and um, you know of course I'm curious it's getting blown out like you can look at her and, and people are going to point fingers like oh like Jimmy fumbled the bag and all this stuff. Like she was just as curious too. Everybody saw it in this last drop. She she made the comments about, you know, me not being, uh, she made the comments about go, me following her, unfollowing her, going private. Point of all that is, is she took time to go through my Instagram, look at what my exes looked like. And it's not like she was interrogating me before I had a chance to interrogate her. Definitely. Um, I want to ask you, it was, was her having a daughter a big factor in why you decided to go with Chelsea? Was that too much for you? Or again, is it just how she talked to you? You realized that you weren't able to handle this? Yeah, 
I think it was really offsetting. She waited so late to tell me. To to her credit, I do understand why she waited, but we were pretty late within the experiment when she told me, and mm -hmm. and I also had a pretty heavy day. I learned a lot that day, and I felt like she wasn't patient with me, so that was a little offsetting, admittedly, but it had nothing to do with why I didn't choose her. After she told me that, she was my number one, even after that day. We did see the interaction with AD, and that set off a fight between you and Chelsea. When when you look back at that, what can you tell me about that interaction? Were you into AD? I mean, we left. So before <laughs> before we go out that night, we're all curious talking about the other couples. She word for word said AD is stacked before we left. And so I go to her and I'm like, that woman is stacked. So like that got blown out of proportion a little bit. It's all love with me and AD. She's I definitely vibe with her. She's super she's super cool. She's one of the sweetest humans I've ever met. And, and, um, you know, it was, it was, it was playful. I mean, I'm, I'm the height, I'm the height man of the group. I'll go up to every single person. If I see a, a buddy of mine wearing something new, maybe they're getting out of their comfort zone a little bit. They got their hair a different way or even a girl. I, I I'll hype them up. That's what I do. And that was blown out of proportion. I was only hyping her and I was hyping clay up that entire time. I mean, like maybe a little playful flirting, but we're just meeting these people. I'm a social guy. I wanted to, I wanted to meet everybody. And so I hate it got to that point, but I do think that that first argument was good for our relationship. Uh, it seemed like y'all were flirting a little bit. I mean, she, she's definitely a, a really good looking girl and uh, she's got an amazing personality, but I'd, um, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't out to, to explore other relationships at that time. I, you know, I had a, I put a ring out there and that's a pretty serious thing for me to do. Gotcha. Um, speaking of that, you guys leave the DR. You guys um, are living together at this point. What's that like? Because what we see is, I mean, a lot of it's microwaved, right? We're condensing three weeks into three episodes. Yeah. Um, last night's release, the, the last three episodes, we see that maybe you're starting to feel a little bit smothered. Was it getting too much? And what was the the too much for you? Yeah, I mean, when, when you think about it, we're, we're spending so much time together. We go into the experiment, get our phones taken away. Everything's intensified when you get back. You know, you start back working. Everybody's on hitting your line. Um, I mean, I had friends I wanted to go hang out with. You know, half of those friends I wanted to introduce her to. And so it was it was a really busy time. And I, I felt that she was wanting to spend a little too much time with me. And I think what I needed at that point was for her to give me a little bit of space and give me some time to miss her because I did love her and I just felt that we were, you know, I was being a little bit smothered and, uh, you know, ultimately we were still learning each other and mm -hmm. she was right by my side every day, all day. And, you know, I was at work from home. So, I mean, I was with her a lot when we got back home. What can you tell me about just from the experience transitioning from the pods, you don't know this person, you only hear their voice. You go to the DR, you're in paradise, right? You're riding the ATVs and you're doing these fun activities and then coming back to real life in North Carolina. Each time is it dawning on you like, oh, I'm in this part of the experiments. Oh snap, like things are progressing. How did your feelings change throughout those process? Yeah, I mean, there was a whole lot of ups and downs with, with Chelsea and I, right? But I think like, the big thing for me is I was so eager for the next step. And, you know, when we're in the Dominican, I was so ready to get home. I was so ready to go show off to my friends and family. When we got, when we got back, we're, you know, we're, we got all these different distractions, getting back to work. And, um, you know, I, I didn't think about it too much. I was on, I, if I could have done something differently, I think I would have slowed down and just enjoyed my time with her. Um, I think my, my favorite part about Chelsea is, and I don't think it's, the, it's, it's being shown in the best light is how well we got along actually because when it came down to pillow talk us having you know intimate conversations getting intimate with each other late at night I mean that's that's where the love was really forming it wasn't that there wasn't any other opportunities but it's the light is being shown on all of the the negative Got it. I will say, I mean, it looks like you guys had did have a pretty strong connection that kept going because you guys are always laughing together. You're having fun together. Um, lastly, I wanted to ask you, 
I mean, as a viewer, we're seeing you guys get closer to the moment where you either say I do or walk away. What was it that you were looking for um, to know that you would be sure in your answer once you were up at the altar? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to have full trust with that person. I knew that she loved me. I can look at her in the eyes and tell how much she loved me and how much she wanted to be with me and wanted a life with me. And that is, I mean, that is what kept me there. And that's what like warmed my heart. Were you ever scared that you would be the bad guy? Like even just when you were signing up for the process, like. hundred uh, percent was scared I'd be the bad guy. I was absolutely salsing in the pods and the bad guy is always the dude that's the heartbreaker. And unfortunately I had to be the heartbreaker. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not fun, but like, I know I'm a good guy. I know the people around me that the friends and family that actually know, know me as a person, they all love me and they think very highly of me. I'm, um, I'm very confident who I am as a person. And so, um, luckily a boy's got some thick skin to deal with this, but, um, I, I felt the whole time I was there, I definitely felt like I might've been <laughs> to answer your question.